Hey, what's going on? Um, glad you clicked on this video because we're going to be talking about something pretty interesting. Um, no YouTube intro, let's just get straight to it. So what we have here, 2012 um, Mac Pro. Um, as you can maybe see, let's see if we can get that. Um, yeah, it's a two, um, two processor. It's a 3.46 gigahertz, six core Xeon. And then for the memory, we have 128 gigs and uh, it's running Mojave, right? And I have a Radeon uh, RX 580. But um, pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade the Wi-Fi card on it. And um, pretty much the, everyone talks about the Bluetooth 4.0 um, upgrade. And some, some people do mention the Bluetooth 4.2 upgrade, but they buy it in the super expensive kit online and no one ever gives the actual part number and um and I, i'm just like I, I don't know why um i don't know how someone's not been able to figure that out but what i have here um it's the airport card bluetooth card from an imac from 2015 late 2015 and supposedly this plus the adapter right here plus this wire extension for the bluetooth i think um should give us bluetooth 4.2 right and the latest wi-fi so um we're gonna go ahead and get started let's go all right so let's go ahead and open it let's unlock the door take the door off you gotta first start uh by taking out the cpu tray and motherboard tray so i think you gotta just what the heck you gotta just push this on each end you gotta kind of push your finger in all right, and you push on these levers, bring it out. And we'll move this to the side. All right, let's get a close look. All right, so first we'll get the old Bluetooth card out. So um, first we'll pull off these antennas. On this one, there's only two that I could see off the front. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingernail to kind of pull it out so i pulled out the first one uh came out just fine and then the second one let's get it out all right so i got the second one out got two of them out right and so we'll remove the two phillips screws one on the top so let's get that all right not too gone all right we got the first one out now the second one All right, so we got that second screw out. And now I think all we gotta do is just pull the Wi-Fi card out. All right. All right, next we'll have to work on this Bluetooth card right here. It's pretty small, right? So then there's like, I think a data cable, then there's an antenna connection. So first we'll just peel off the antenna connection like we did earlier. All right, so we got that off. Um, now let's pull off the data cable from the... All right, so pull it out. Comes out pretty easily, right? Then we're gonna have to take off this Phillips screw right here. All right, so we got the screw out. Now all we have to do is I believe just pull this off. All right, so I just found out that it has some adhesive, so you need to pull on it a bit harder than I think. And yes, I got it off right here. All right, so while we're still here and we still have our Bluetooth antenna, we might as well go ahead and install the extension, right? All right, so looks like I actually was using the wrong side. And so Use the right female side and now it's actually secure. Make sure you push it in all the way because it was actually pretty loose when I first tried it. So now it's not loose and I fed the other end through the back, right? The other end. And so that's going in through here, the male end, right? So that this is going to go on the new Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi card and let's go. So here's the new card and here's just a little close up on it. Right, and so this is coming straight from an iMac and it has four ports. One of them is for Bluetooth 
And so here's what it should be, which antenna is which and which is Bluetooth right here. And I mean, the other one looks a little different, the one on used on other guides. So hopefully this should work. All right, so here's the new card. I'm gonna first connect what I believe is the Bluetooth connector. So let's do that. All right, so that's in. All right, so what I also found is there actually, if your Mac Pro doesn't have a third connector already on the Bluetooth board, there might be one, if you can see where my finger is, it's like wrapped in like a plastic tube, clear plastic tube. So just pull that off. I assume that's gonna be antenna three. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up antenna three now. This is kind of hard because that's, I think the shortest one. So I went ahead and just did all of them. So that's what it looks like with four connectors on it. So the first two are Wi-Fi, the third is Bluetooth and the fourth is Wi-Fi as well. So this is good to go. Now we're gonna need to bring over the connector and get everything ready. All right, I'm gonna just show this one up close. So when you're connecting the adapter, you wanna make sure that the, um, sorry, the negative is on the top and the positive is on the bottom. So in this case, my black will be on the top, my red will be on the bottom. So <clears throat> let me just go ahead and connect this for you guys and show you. It just goes in right there. All right, it's nice and snug and secure. Almost in, yeah, now it's second gear. Now it's good. All right, perfect. Now we're good to go on this end. All right, so I fed the adapter through the back and now we're going to want to install the adapter. So I have the Bluetooth card, Wi-Fi card, and it's going to go in like, actually, sorry, it's supposed to go in actually in reverse. So, this will be a little complex, but let me go ahead and get this inside. All right, so I got it in and it looks like there's two screw holes and I uh, believe this came with screws or I'll use the old screws. So let me go ahead and get that in. All right, so now the screws are in. Why is it out of focus? All right, so now we have to flip it back, I believe this way, and we're going to have to insert it and we might have to align those screw holes. I will have to see and let you know here in a moment. All right, so this is what it looks like here. Oh, let's get it right there. This is what it looks like in the slot. Uh, I do want to say that it was a little difficult to get it in because just the antenna wires for the Wi-Fi is super short, right? And so um, it came undone at one point, then I had to reconnect it. Um, so as you can see that the, uh, the um, adapter is on the other side, right? And the Wi-Fi card is on this side, right? So um, I think everything's good to go. Only thing I'll just do is I'll think I'll put that screw that was originally here back there. And um, I think it should be all secured and good to go. And after that, we'll do some tests and set up and see how it works. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you guys off the bat um, that it did recognize my... Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card, new one. So as you can see, we're under Bluetooth under um, system report. And as you can see, uh, HCI version 4.2. So that means the card does have 4.2. Um, so that's a good sign. And then, so if we come back down to Wi-Fi, we could see that we have AC now, right? And, and it did recognize the card, right? Um, so off the bat, it connected straight to Wi-Fi. It recognized my old Wi-Fi. And so it, it immediately went to it. Um, downside, I am not finding any Bluetooth devices. All right, so quick update. So I ran some commands that I found on the article that I was following. And um, then I also uh, ran Kext Utility, which just, um, refreshes the Kex, right? Um, your system extensions, right? And so it still doesn't show anything under Bluetooth, but I am able to see, if you could see here, um, you see it recognized my Mac Studio, then Mac Pro, and then I select Mac Pro, and then it looks like it successfully connects, right? Connected, right? Um, and, and it's even recognized right here, but it didn't show up as a discoverable 
um, Bluetooth device, right? So now I'm just gonna try the same thing with my Mac Studio. And as you can see, Mac Studio isn't even recognized. So let's connect. And yeah, it has two Bluetooth devices and it's working just fine, right? So uh, the last test I'll do is just AirDrop, right? New AirDrop, let's see if new AirDrop works. All right, so I'm about to send a file from my Mac Studio over to the Mac Pro. Let's see, I, I just heard the tone and, yep, AirDrop received, right? As you can see at the top, oh, well, it's kind of cut off, but um, I got the document and it was just a list of games that I have on my Xbox. Awesome, so AirDrop works just fine, perfect. All right, everybody, so I had to come back and actually redo this video because um, the Windows portion is actually pretty tricky. So let me explain. So you're gonna need, uh, if you have Windows, you could download this uh, GitHub program called Bombardier. Or if you have uh, Mac, you can use uh, Brigar Brigadier. I, I don't even know how to say him, but anyways. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna download uh, the driver package for, um, I believe the iMac 2017. And so once you have the iMac 2017 drivers, uh, you'll come into drivers. Um, I don't know if you can see this here. Let me see if I can zoom in. Uh, so you wanna come into, you, you'll get this bootcamp folder, then you go into drivers, then you go into Broadcom, and then you'll have Broadcom Bluetooth 64 and as well as Broadcom Wireless Win 864. So um, what you'll do is you'll just install it, simply install it. And then you'll want to come over here and verify that you actually have the right version of the driver. So the one that worked for me was 11.21.2016, and this is the driver version. Um, so um, I've, uh, there's a, one that comes with Windows Update, and that had even more issues. And um, I used another one that was someone had uploaded on GitHub. That didn't work for me either. What the problem was that every few days that... Um, you would leave the computer on, it, the, the wireless driver would just crash and it would refuse to connect to anything, right? It could see the network, but it would refuse to connect. So um, I had to look into this and figure out why, right? And um, uh, the, the easiest combination is to use the driver that I said, the Broadcom Wireless Win 864. And then you wanna come over to, uh, I believe, uh, let me see under advanced and you want to come to believe it's power output and to power output you want to put 25% right that that was the main thing that got it to work right so you have to change it to 25% and uh, I, know, I know you're probably worried like hey will it just only function at 25% speed no it actually functions at the full speed um, I mean for my use I'm getting exactly what I expected and um, though, I mean, there's no issue with it, right? So the only thing is you actually have to come in and turn on this setting or it will crash, right? Um, after a few days. So it's working been, it's been working fine for the last week. So pretty happy with it. Um, everything's working in Windows and getting exactly what I want. So this works perfectly. So no, no worries in Windows, even if you cheap out and buy it separately. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.